station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is station. I am ready for the event. National Park Service, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is the National Park Service. How do you hear us? National Park Service, this is the International Space Station. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, we're very excited to be here with you today. My name is Ashley Danielson. I'm a ranger with the Lewis and Clark National Historic Trail. I'm here at Gateway Arch National Park in St. Louis. And we are excited to talk to you, Serena, and hopefully uh, hear a little bit more about your time in space and about the connections between space exploration and the Lewis and Clark expedition. This downlink today is part of a partnership between the National Park Service and NASA to celebrate the 60th anniversary of NASA and the 50th anniversary of the National Trail System. I'm gonna turn it over to students from Dr. Katie Harper Wright Elementary School. Um, hello, my name is Jamis, and my question is, how is Seaman Jr. enjoying space? So he is enjoying space just fine. You can see him here with me. And uh, he kind of floats around during the day and follows us in our activities and learns what it's like to, to be in space. And, and he's been learning about all the science that we're conducting on board the space station, from science on, on people themselves to science on materials. And lately, he's been helping us load our HTV7 cargo vehicle. So he's been helping organize. And he has his tablet in front of him and tells us where to put all the different cargo bags. So he is doing great and loves it up here. Hi, my name is Madison, and my question is, the Lewis and Clark expedition took, took, oh, took two years. How long is your expedition in space going to take? Yeah, Lewis and Clark's expedition was definitely a long one under uh, much more difficult conditions. Uh, our expedition up here will be around six months, could be a little longer. Uh, but our crew launched in June of this year, and uh, right now we're slated to come home in December. And like I said, that could stretch out a little bit. We've had people up here as long as a year at times, and honestly, it's gone by so fast, we cannot believe that we are starting the fifth month of our expedition. Hi, my name is Montel Harper. My my question is, Seaman the dog served as a watchdog for Lewis and Clark expedition. How does Ashton not stay safe in space? That's a great question. Um, a lot of people wonder how we do stay safe up here, and it's a very easy answer. There are a lot of women and men on the ground who are watching out over us right now in Mission Control, and certainly Mission Control Houston, Moscow, all over the world, we have not just one mission control, but many. And we have folks that work there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They never take a break. And they are watching all the systems up here. They are making sure that our life support system is working, the power system, everything. So it's really nice when we go to bed at night, we sleep calmly because we know that folks are looking out after us. Hi, my name is Cherish, and my question is, Lewis and Clark wrote in, journey, in journals. Do you write in journals? Absolutely. In fact, writing in a journal, like you said, stretch, stretches back as far as the time of Lewis and Clark and even before then. We've always, as humans, we've liked to keep a written history of what we do. And we do the same thing up here on board the space station. It's amazing how long that tradition lasts, but there's... Um, nothing more satisfying than sitting down and writing in a page in your journal at night. Now, one extra thing that we like to do that Lewis and Clark could not do because they did not have tablets was we actually record video journals as well. And that way we can just kind of talk into a camera and talk about our feelings and our thoughts for that day or if something important or exciting has happened up here. Um, 
And that way people can see it later and see us and, and look at our facial reactions and, and feel what it's like to be up here at the time. Hi, I'm Dr. Lewis and Clark Expedition. Scientific data had, was collected. What types of data are you collecting in space? Wow, we kind of we collect all kinds of data every day, 24 hours a day. Um, so I'll give you a couple examples of those. Um, we have actually in this module, and this is the Japanese module that I'm in right now. I've got some plants that are actually growing at the far end, and Junior here has been watching these plants grow. And very soon we're going to do a harvest on these plants and see how these plants grow different in gravity. And what we found the last time was was when there's no gravity and the plant stem grows, it doesn't grow straight up or down. It grows in these spirals and grows in every direction. So the plants actually like to have gravity there to tell them where to grow and how to grow. But when they don't have it, um, they're kind of left to guess. And so that was one of the most interesting things that I have seen up here. Plus, oftentimes, the crew that's up here, right now it's a crew of three. We've got one American, myself, uh, our German commander, Alex Gerst, and our Russian cosmonaut, Sergei. We all sit and actually collect science on ourselves. So we learn how to draw blood on ourselves. We collect our urine, and you think, wow, that's really weird. But we collect it all, and we freeze it, and we bring it back down so that they can learn how the human body reacts up here in space. Hi, my name is Ramon. My question is, it is the 50th anniversary of the Trail System Act. Are you able to see the entire 3,700 miles of the Lewis and Clark Trails in space? So with some of our really special cameras with the big lenses, we can zoom way in and we can see parts of that trail. Um, all 3,700 miles would be tough because we are moving so fast up here. We are moving at 17,500 miles per hour. And you think, oh my gosh, how can you move that fast and not feel it? Well, it's all relative, but we're moving so fast, it takes us almost no time to cross over the United States. Um, but that's one of our favorite parts is grabbing one of those cameras, looking out our window to the earth that we call the cupola, and seeing the beautiful terrain, the mountains, the trees, the valleys. It's absolutely beautiful. Hi, my name is Adrian, and my question is, when was NASA established? So as you heard just a little while ago, NASA is celebrating an anniversary too. We were established as an agency in July 1958. So we are celebrating our 60th anniversary this year. And we're very, very excited about that. It's hard to think that we've been exploring space and trying to put humans in space for 60 years. And you know, just the other day before our Japanese cargo vehicle came up, uh, Drew Foistel and I were looking out the window of the cupola and we see this huge vehicle pull up alongside of the space station. And it was just amazing to see because for us that now seems commonplace. It's very common for cargo vehicles to come and we grab them with the robot arm and bring them into station. And if you think about that, it's definitely not a common event. But we've become very comfortable with it and it's just neat to see how far we've come with human spaceflight. Hi, my name is Gabe, and my question is, Lewis and Clark took a leap of faith as they explored new territory. How was this a great leap of faith for you? So I think any time you come out to explore space and come to live on the space station, it's a little bit of a leap of faith. Um, we definitely, we trust our vehicle, the Soyuz very much. It's a fantastic vehicle. We trust the space station. We trust the women and the men who are on the ground looking out after us, building and designing these things and keeping us safe up here. Um, don't get me wrong, it's beautiful looking out at the earth, but you do realize how far away you are from the earth up here and how far away you are from your families. But it's such a fantastic experience to, and, and really quite an honor to be up here and represent your country and perform all this magnificent science. You do think about that leap of faith, um, but it's, uh, let me tell you, it's just a wonderful adventure up here. Hi, my name is Brianna, and my question is, the Lewis and Clark Expedition relied on the strengths of many diverse people to succeed. 
How do diversity help NASIC succeed? So certainly with all the different crew members we've had up here on the International Space Station and even the shuttle program before that, we've had very diverse people on all of those missions because we want to show not only America but all countries across the world that all kinds of people can live and work up here. You know, we are all trained the same. We take the same classes and everything, but there are doctors up here like myself. There are engineers. There are, there are geophysicists like our commander, Alex Gerst. There are test pilots like Sergei. And so all our backgrounds are completely different. We came from different walks in life, but we all learn how to work together up here, and we do it really, really well, and we have a lot of fun doing it. Hi, my name is Debrya. My question is, Lewis and Clark had to hunt or trade for food. How do astronauts get food to eat in space? Well, thank goodness we don't have to hunt for it up here because, boy, there are not a whole lot of animals up here besides Junior. And so we do trade, though. We will trade for food. So sometimes uh, Alex and I will head down and go visit Sergey and say, hey, we want some of that tasty Russian food that you've got there. You want some of our food? And we'll trade back and forth. But all of our food comes up on these cargo vehicles, like I just mentioned. Uh, we have the Japanese cargo vehicle, HTV, and that brought a whole lot of food up here. And we don't just keep food up here for one or two weeks at a time. We keep it for months and months and months just in case. And so everything we eat and drink is out of bags. So let me, let me show you one of those bags here so you understand um, what our daily life is like when we eat and drink up here. So this is... This is one of our drink bags, and you can see it. It says pineapple drink on it. And that little red marking there, it's S, so that's my drink bag, and I put the date on there as well. It's what we call GMT, just so I know how old this drink bag is in case I find it a year from now. But uh, everything has to be kept inside a pouch so it doesn't escape, because look what happens to fluid when it escapes up here. It just forms this big bubble, and it goes everywhere but very easy to drink and very easy to play with your food too. So it's very tasty, but all of our food comes in these bags here um, so we can keep it contained, but it also lasts for a really long time. Hi, my name is Lamar and my question is, how are you a diplomat as an astronaut? And I think your question was, how are you a diplomat as an astronaut? Um, certainly all of us from our respective countries up here, and right now, again, America, Germany, and Russia, um, we serve as diplomats for our country. I think the biggest thing that we demonstrate to the world is to show that folks from different countries who speak different languages um, can work together in one space station to perform science for one goal, and that's for mankind, to make sure that we can make life better for everybody on Earth. And people don't think that the science we do up here matters to people on Earth, but it absolutely does. There's been a lot of science I've been doing, medical science up here, which can absolutely make a difference, including everything from cancer therapy to helping solve the problems of Alzheimer's disease. So I think as diplomats, um, we demonstrate that every day, and we love doing it. Hi, my name is Dave. So that's a great question because actually Alex and I just a couple days ago were using one of the oldest navigational tools around and that is the sextant. And we were testing it out in our cupola and basically learning how to use the stars to navigate. And you may say, well, why would you do that? The space station is this very modern machine with navigational systems, and but you never know when you might need a backup. And certainly one of our new vehicles, Orion, that will be taking us past low Earth orbit, and that's where we are orbiting right now is low Earth orbit. Orion's gonna take us past that. You may need a backup system someday. And believe it or not, the sextant is one of those systems that we are testing out. And it's really kind of neat to be on this very, very modern machine and pull out this very old, graceful tool and use it and realize it still works just as well today as it did way back then. 
Lewis and Clark were sleep in tents. Where do you sleep? So Lewis and Clark probably had a little more room in their sleeping tent than we do in our sleeping quarters. Um, and Junior here is used to that. But he, uh, we have little crew quarters that are about the size of a phone booth. And we keep all our personal belongings in there. We have a computer. We have all our clothes, pictures of family, and a sleeping bag. And the thing about being up here in space is you can sleep on any wall, but we basically sleep against the wall. We kind of have to tie ourselves down with the sleeping bag to make sure we don't float off at night, but it's very, very comfortable. And so when you first see it, you think, wow, that's a really small area, but you get used to it because you can utilize all that space around you. And it's not like on Earth where the only space you can use is, is what's at your feet. So um, granted, I think Lewis and Clark were a little colder than we were. We keep a nice temperature up here to where we're very comfortable all the time. Hi, my name is Jemaya, and my question is, Lewis and Clark took medicine along with them during the expedition. Do you have medicine available if you get sick? Yeah, we absolutely do. We have a whole bunch of different kinds of medicine up here. Um, we try to pack for what we think might be the most common use medicines at home. They're probably, you're familiar with them. They're a lot of the same medicines you would see in your medicine cabinet that you would ask your mom and your dad for. If we need extra medicine, we can get that medicine up here. Uh, in fact, you know, these cargo vehicles I talked about, they bring us extra medicines all the time. And so we have so many coming to visit station that usually if we need something, we look at the schedule and say, okay, when is this cargo vehicle coming? And let's put some extra medicine on that. Uh, so we definitely have a lot of different ways to treat things up here, things you would see in your doctor's office. Not everything, uh, but we can do a lot. Hi, my name is Janila, and my question is, Lewis and Clark had an American flag. Where on the space station is the American flag? So we definitely have the American flag a lot of places on space station. In fact, I don't know if you can see, but right over my head is an American flag. I'll pull it down a little bit there. But I got one right over my head up here, and they are scattered all over the space station. But we also have the flags of many countries here on the space station, since many, many countries help build the space station. So again, for example, today, I'm in the Japanese module. And this is a module that Japan built, and we successfully made it to the space station. And I've worked here a good portion of the morning. So Lewis and Clark did carry that famous flag with them, and we also carry flags with us up here today. Hi, my name is Nazayo, and my question today is, the Lewis and Clark Expedition had innovative tools for the time. What are some of your innovative tools using on the space station? Wow, we've got all kinds of innovative tools that we use up here to do things. Uh, I'll give you one example, and it's just because I'm a doctor, so I'm very familiar with all the doctor tools we have up here, and that's something called an ultrasound machine. Uh, people thought we wouldn't be able to do things like that up on board the space station, but we've got special machines that can actually show us different parts of your body, and doctors can look at them and, and make sure that everything looks okay. Um, now you think, well, what if you're not very good at using the machine? You don't have lots of training to do that. Well, we have special people that sit on the ground, and we use something called telemedicine. And I know it's a big word, but what that means is we've got doctors on the ground helping us up here to do special medical things. And so they help us learn how to use the ultrasound machine, and they can watch us on camera and make sure we're getting the right views and everything. So that's just one example of what we do. Something else we do that's pretty innovative, and you're going to think this is kind of gross, and that is anything that all of our urine. So anytime we go to the bathroom during the day, we turn that pee into water because it's too difficult to bring all the water that we need every day up here on the space station. So we have found an innovative way, a special way to process our pee and turn it into something that we drink. I know Lewis and Clark didn't have that. They had to find their own water. So certainly we've made some leaps and bounds since then. Hi, my name is Jamis, and my question is, Lewis and Clark sent items back from the expedition for President President Jefferson to review. Are you bringing anything back from your 
back home from your expedition. expedition. Yeah, absolutely. I think some of the most important things I'm bringing back uh, are pictures for a lot of family and friends. They wanted me to bring a special picture of their family for them up here on the International Space Station. And I've taken some really neat pictures of those pictures in the cupola. Um, also brought, I flew a lot of American flags with me and uh, also some very special star pins to give out to some great folks when I get back for all their help with the training on this expedition. Um, you know, you want to, uh, I think one of the most important things that we bring back, however, are certainly ourselves and our memories of the expedition and how to make it better for the next explorers who come up here. So almost immediately after we land, um, we start what we call something called debriefs. And what that is is we sit down around a big table with a group of people and they ask us how can we make things better? And we talk about how we can make things better for all the space station expeditions. All right, Sabrina and Seaman Jr., thank you so much for joining us today. As Lewis and Clark wrote, we proceed on. Have a great day. Awesome talking with you guys. Have a great day. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants from National Park Service. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.